I still remember that night. It haunts me even now when I'm dead. Darkness enveloped me then. Panic in my run, desperation in his. Soundless shrieks which were lost in oblivion. My pain resounded in empty void. My heart pumped fear and despair as the wall of hope crumbled beyond repair. Those pitch black shadows of a guy's carnal desire have rendered my heart and soul in a stark funeral pyre. He seems like a normal fellow, doesn't he? But there's always more than what you can see. He is the guy who raped me. He is the guy who killed me. Look at the sick, evil glint in his eyes. Beneath his cool exterior hide innumerable lies. But wait, do you suppose I blame him only for what he has done to me? Here is his father, the man of the house, domineering, ruthless, exuding power on his spouse. A man who believes women are just mattresses, who can be bullied and insulted at will. The mother, so quiet like the rocks on the shore, facing the humiliation, tolerating the agony and much more. Here is Ajay's sister who does care what her mother bears, but she doesn't have the courage to fight the insults and tears. Here is he himself who breathes with disgust. I wish I could kill him for his never-ending lust. I will follow him wherever he goes. Surely he will meet someone who he knows. Supporting his swagger are his friends who encourage him and tie all his loose ends. They provoke him to eye girls as objects, push him to prove that he is the man. A man who towers above everything else and can get what he wants. As I watch him in close quarters, I realize that not only his friends but someone else is also responsible for who he is. A glam doll is just the right fodder to feed his animal instincts, just as a hunter hunts his prey and sometimes the hunter becomes the hunted. I look at such scenes every day, flirting without care, often poking the men to drive their beauty intentions forward.
Men are what they are. Here women act as vixens as this plummets further to ghastly results. Day after day, a girl is the slave to her parents' wishes and to that of the society. No opinion, no wish, no choice. Her in-laws waiting to pounce upon her, she has to watch over all the fuss created in the air. And she waits for her sacrifice to be made, just as a goat is brought under the blade. And she sits there repressed, dejected, squashed. She watches over as the parents accept the dowry proposal. Ajay's sister is here alone, depressed and disillusioned. The TV offers her the only solace and the diversion that she needs. TV soaps, hmm, who can forget their impact? They establish the fact, come what may, the hero is always right, even if he had an affair. She has to go, and she knows it. Here is the principal villain of all. The media has lots to say about anything and about everything. Glorifying crime of unimaginable proportions is always on their agenda. People take delight in this repetitive chain of events. And the vicious father and the son have a bonding with each other. It is drinks time for them. I can see the remote on their table as they constantly flip through different channels. Now is my chance to envision a new world. Can I? Let me change the root causes of the story. <laughs> I see a world where the father will love his wife and treat her with dignity. A father who will believe that even cleaning the dishes is not below his worth, where both coexist with mutual love and respect. I see a world where Ajay will ignore what his friends get him to do, where he believes in treating women as they themselves should be treated. I see a world where random lewd expressions do not dictate the order of the day, where conscience plays a big role in defeating temptation. I see a world where the sister will to stand for herself and her dignity by not complying with the dowry practice. I can see the innocence in her eyes, which remind me of mine. She gives me hope, the hope that change will begin from within, the hope that together each one will pledge to make a difference, the hope that never ever a girl has to die like me. <laughs>